Let's hop into the garage where I've got it currently and let's just take a closer look at some of the, the, the subtle things that's going on with this cab, okay? Right, so here we are in the garage and you can see that, you know, this cab really is in good shape. The actual cabinet structure itself, really cool fancy T-moulding they put in here. That is awesome. Look at that side art. I haven't even cleaned this either. It's, um, it's got a little bit of dirt on it, so I'll give it a wipe down with some simple green before it goes in. But yeah, we're missing the bottom coin door, which is a bit of a blow because it's probably going to be pretty hard to find, I would suggest. But I'll need to track one of those down. It's got the original uh, main coin door and even the keys for that. Now, unfortunately, the back key lock was uh, drilled out, so that will need to be replaced, but that one's perfectly fine. The control panel was definitely blown out. And as you can see again, the Leisure Allied Industries uh, stamp on there, so we know that, yeah, this was definitely an aftermarket kit. And who knows what I'm gonna do here, I mean, uh, you know, I definitely have to obviously take all this off and sand it back and repaint it and then, you know, get some other overlay. And I have seen, in fact, there's a guy in the UK who did a overlay for, you know, either track and field, I think he had plugged in, but his, the cabinet over there that he used was similar to this in that it had the run, jump, run all together in a line. Whereas in the US, the track and field, the jump button's up here. Um, so the artwork obviously only suits that, whereas he converted the artwork to work in this sort of arrangement. Now, his panel may be slightly different in size and so forth, but I might be able to use the artwork as a, a, the basis to get this redone. I think that would be worth it. The plexi, yeah, we've got the standard smoke marks, you know, people resting their cigarettes back in the day. But a plexi's not too bad, it's got a few scratches on here, but you're not going to really, you, well, you don't, don't see it actually when the monitor's on. And I don't know, the, the little smoke marks are almost quite cool because it just shows that, you know, that's what used to happen back in the day. It's not totally destroyed, so I think that's fine. Bit of honest wear. The marquee's in good shape. It's not a great looking marquee, mind you. But I've looked on the internet and I can't see any other reference to this particular marquee. So now if we look inside the cabinet here, uh, again, it's actually pretty clean on the bottom. I mean, it's got the normal dust and stuff in there, but all original power supplies, transformers. And I need to go through all that. You know, we've got a sound problem at the moment. It's probably power related, but not sure yet. Uh, what I did find which was pretty cool is up on the side here you'll be able to see uh, very faintly you can see it says Defender okay machine type Defender so definitely a Defender cab got the checklist in fact these little checklists and little pieces of paper stamped here is exactly the same as my Taito Missile uh, Command cocktail which has the same information obviously with the missile command information but it's the same little cards and it's from Tato Australia and so this is why I think there's a lot of original Tato cabs over here because Tato was here in Australia and had their own registered company locally so that avoided a lot of their machines I guess being released or re-released by LAI but obviously LAI still provided sort of conversion kits to these original cabs so I think that's really the history there and the monitor, which we suspect may have a chassis problem, but I'm not so sure now because when I bought this home, I had a bit of a look in here. And this wiring looks pretty dodgy. Um, this earth, you know, it doesn't look good at all. And there's other things that are cut in here. I don't know why, but that might be from the original changeover from Defender um to the hyper olympics board but yeah it's not great and what i did is i sort of just wiggled some of these because i was thinking maybe it's just the video sync it's not getting through properly to the monitor 
um, that possibly could cause the sort of issues that we were seeing. And I gave it a bit of a wiggle and then I turned it on when I got home last night and um, the monitor didn't come up at all. I came back here, I gave it another wiggle, turned it back on and then it came up and it was doing the same thing as before. So I suspect we've got definite problems on this connector here. Okay guys, well I ended up, I reflowed uh, the sink cable onto there. That cable harness really needs to be redone though I think. Uh, I cleaned the edge connector with an eraser and uh, looked a little bit crusty on the plus 5 volt so I don't know if it's uh, got a bit of resistance somewhere there. And also the main Molex connector there doesn't quite sort of fit snugly all the way in but it, it is together. I did reset that but that didn't make any change. The result which is still looking like this and you know I've adjusted the horizontal hold of course um, to try and adjust that out but it's not adjusting out. One thing I will check is I'll just check to see what voltage it is getting. I mean I don't see that having any particular issue. I can see that the board is running behind there but let's just check the voltages nonetheless. Uh, as I said what, on the edge connector it looked a little, little bit crusty under plus five so maybe it's actually being overdriven anyway which is not a good thing. So I'll get the multimeter and we'll check that out. And that, look at that, dead on five. So yeah, there's no voltage issue uh, going to the board. That's all, that's all good. Although I do am a little bit concerned why it's a little bit crusty. We've got on that edge. Anyway, I think that's all we can do for today. Let's go back into the theater and get this box inside. Well, there we go, it is in place. And I must say, <laughs> it uh, looks really good here. I didn't think it would uh, fit so well. I love the way this is all staggered now, these three machines. I can uh, still swing around the couch in, in front of it. It won't join up with this one now, but it can still be swung around the front there for watching movies and so forth. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually really liking this. So, another machine to the collection but I have to get this working I've, got, I've just got the Astro City working seems a shame now that I've bought another machine and that's not working I really want to get them all at least working so need to do some more work on this uh, at least just to get Hyper Olympic going temporarily and then we'll spend some more time on it once we get the Defender parts well that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more please subscribe, uh, give it a, a like or a thumbs up uh, if you liked it and um, yeah I look forward to seeing you next time. So until then take care and ciao for now.